You know you shouldn't, but you do it anyway. You judge yourself too harshly. You compare. You stick with a project that you hate. And you listen to others when you know better. We've all been there. Let's agree together today to stop making these quilting mistakes. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Hi, I'm Amy and I make things. Today, I'm making a pact with you to stop making these huge quilting mistakes. Come on, let's talk about it. I'm not talking about cutting mistakes or piecing mistakes or anything a seam ripper can fix. I'm talking about something bigger, something deeper, something much more important. How familiar does this sound? You show your friend a finished quilt. They ooh and ah and shower you with praise and you do what? You say, thanks, but my points don't match or I should have chosen different colors or, 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 right? You know I'm right. We've all done it. Let's stop that. We made something beautiful that took time, effort, money and skill, and it's amazing. What's more, your friend thinks both you and that quilt are amazing, and they're right. Let's agree to say thank you and love ourselves and our work as much as our friend does. Then there's this one. You see pictures online of someone's elaborate sewing studio or immaculate stash or copious output or intricate piecing and quilting, and you believe, you believe, if I had that space or that time or that machine, it's so easy to get caught in the trap of comparison. Comparison at best leaves us with feelings of inadequacy and at worst, outright jealousy. And here's the real real. What you have or don't have around you doesn't change what you have inside you. Your creativity, your imagination, your growing skill set is always within your reach because you carry it with you. Be inspired and encouraged by talented friends and artists, but try not to compare. You are on your unique creative journey and don't miss its lessons and opportunities comparing yourself to others. Comparison really is the thief of joy. Have you ever slogged through a project just because you started it? Sometimes we should finish hard projects for good reasons, like the ones in this video. But sometimes we do it even when we shouldn't. Just because you start something, and with the best of intentions, it doesn't mean you have to finish it. I can hear you now, but I've already spent all this time and money, and that's exactly my point. The money and time, the, they're already gone. Finishing a project that you hate or that isn't working out or worse that you're going to resent when you finish it isn't going to get any of that time or money back. It's only going to cost more time and maybe more money. It's just throwing good money after bad. Save yourself time and heartache and pass the project on or reintegrate the items into your stash. Guilt free. Sometimes the lesson is figuring out what we don't want. Which brings me to mistake number four. And if you find this interesting or entertaining, please smash that like button and subscribe button down below so you don't miss anything. Mistake number four is trusting others more than you trust yourself. We've all done it wanted to make a choice or a change, but we were unsure. So we followed someone else's advice or stuck to the pattern recommendation. And then we either regretted it or continually wondered, what if? What if I had used a different color or changed that block or whatever it is? Sure, seek counsel if you need a skill or if you trust someone's color sense or eye for design, but in the end, you are the boss of your quilting, and it's your project. Trust your spark, trust your intuition, even when it makes you uncomfortable. Maybe especially when it makes you uncomfortable. That's how you find your artistic voice and your personal style. 
even if it's the smallest of choices, like using a scrappy binding or substituting blue where the pattern calls for red, you have the choice and you are a smart, creative person. Sometimes it won't work out the way you envisioned, but that's where we learn. That's where we grow and frankly, that's where it's fun. And maybe these four mistakes aren't limited to quilting. Maybe they're lessons we can carry to many areas of our lives. I know I can benefit from judging myself more gently, getting off that comparison train, letting things go that have outlived their usefulness, and trusting myself more than I trust anyone else. So let's make a pact, you and me, to stop making these mistakes in quilting and in the bigger picture. It takes boldness, but I know we can do it. And I know that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. If you want to start with building color confidence, check out the playlist on the screen. I'm Amy, and I'll see you next time.